The new 2021 Ford F-150 is packed with features. I've got a lot to show you, including these trick fold flat seats. You can watch me take a nap. That'll get you to subscribe. Here it is, the most popular truck sold in America 44 years straight, the best-selling vehicle in the U.S. for 39, and yes, that includes cars, vans, and the little Tykes Cozy Coupe. Ford's F-150 is a franchise stronger than McDonald's. To defend it against Chevy, GMC, and the ambitious Ram, the Blue Oval folks have turned out a new king of the hill for 2021. Yeah, it's new, with some interesting tech and love of country. The body panels? are still military grade aluminum alloy and the 2021 model doesn't look significantly different than the 2020, almost like a mid-cycle refresh. But Ford says it's over 90% new. It's easy to overbuy a pickup's capability. There's always the nagging belief, I might need to haul houses off their foundations. I can't help you there other than to suggest therapy. Ford won't make the decision easy since there are three cab sizes, three bed lengths, six powertrains, six models, and 11 different grills. Any guesses to which trim level I'm driving? Subtle. This one retails for around 72 grand as tested. Pricing starts at $30,600 for a rear drive regular cab, load up a top trim limited, and it goes for over 81,000 bucks. Quite a price spread. That's all before incentives, which are usually common, but these are odd times. I would love to test out the new 3.5 liter V6 Power Boost full hybrid, but I'm here with the only V8 offered, a 5 liter, classic choice. It delivers 400 horsepower and 410 pound feet of torque. Those figures are improved a little bit. Uh, you'll never forget you're driving a Ford, huh? The 3.5-liter EcoBoost V6 has the same horsepower, but ups torque to 500. There are 10 speeds in the gearbox, with manual shifting on the manly, meaty shift lever. The FX4 package adds hill descent control, front off-road shocks and skid plates. It can only be had with four-wheel drive that has a set-and-forget automatic mode, two-speed transfer case, electronic locking rear axle, plus a few extra drive modes. Uh, nice graphics. I'd watch the configurable gauge cluster on Netflix. FYI, the 3.5 liter EcoBoost and the PowerBoost Hybrid are more powerful and they're V6s, but the V8 just sounds so great. Pickup trucks and V8s, they're like chocolate and peanut butter, two great things that go great together. Zero to 60 is a six and a half second affair, not as fast as the other two engines, but less expensive and more musical. Modern pickups, they're comfortable, they're quiet. You can use them every day. The only issue that I have with this one is that over 75 miles an hour, there's a little bit of wind noise off the side mirror. Other than that, it's almost car-like. It's never gonna be car-like. This is a pickup truck. Some vehicles drive smaller than they are. F-150 feels the size it is. The Platinum is only available with the largest crew cab. This five and a half foot bed can be a foot longer. Simply pay the separate $300 processing fee. Now, okay, it's an option. When I drove it, I considered the Ram 1500 to be the gold standard when it comes to drivability in a pickup truck. It's really easy to pilot that vehicle. But I'm not going to lie to you, it's been a couple years since I've driven it. So this might be the equal. It's at least in the ballpark. I highly suggest test driving if that dynamic is important to you. F-150 runs with an independent coil front suspension with leaf springs in the back. Ram has used double wishbone in front, coil springs in the rear for a while now. Have to believe that gives it a driving dynamic advantage. The 10-speed transmission is very smooth, the kind of dynamic that you'd find in a luxury vehicle. Seriously. F-150's max payload ranges from around 1,700 to 3,300 pounds. Max towing starts at 5,000 and climbs to 14,000. You all know it depends on cab, bed, and powertrain. The fuel economy rating of this four-wheel drive V8 F-150 is 19 miles per gallon. That's the EPA-rated average. A pro tip, the hybrid version gets 24 mpg, which is impressive and uh, it's more powerful. 
Gotta love science and engineering, huh? Pickups have all the aerodynamics of the box your Amazon packages come in. Ford does everything it can to help. Something drivers will never see is an active chin device that deploys at higher speeds. Automatic engine stop-start systems are getting really good these days. They keep improving, and this one here is exceptionally smooth. In fact, I drove this car in city traffic for about an hour before I realized that the system was on. So yeah, you can turn it off. You probably won't. Ford's suite of active electronic safety tech is called Copilot 360 2.0, and it's standard on all but the base XL. It includes automatic emergency braking that pedestrians will be thankful for, and auto high beams. There's available intersection assist that applies the brakes when taking a left turn if the system senses an oncoming collision threat. Adaptive cruise control is an option, and not just on the top limited model. Talking to you, GM. So there's a sensor and camera package that you can buy right now, and then Ford will deliver a software update that gives you active drive assist. This is Ford's version of Cadillac Super Cruise. That's good stuff. That would be great to have on a pickup. Being a Platinum, one level down from the top tier Limited, one would expect it to be fairly swanky in here. There are spots of real wood and the expected higher-end leather. Plastics are improved over the last F-150 I drove. So are the other materials. The ambiance is nice. Uh, Ram still makes a more impressive statement to the retinas. There are some advantages to the Ford. It's easier to get work done or eat lunch on this surface than in any other truck. I brought out the largest laptop I own and it stows away just fine. Uh, where did the shift lever go? Ah, that is pretty smart. The best of all worlds. This will definitely speak to some people. Not everybody is a six foot two construction worker, huh? A 360 camera view is nice to have on pickups. So is Ford's trailer control system and this F-150 parks itself. Let's talk about the Max Recline seats. The feature is available on the passenger side, but can't be used while driving unless you can endure a very annoying warning tone. It helps to have the cushion as high as possible. Now, this isn't simply a reclining seat. It is actually a little bit different. If you watch very closely, the bottom of the seat cushion raises up to meet the bottom of the seat back. That gives you a much more comfortable lounging position. Imagine if you were a hardworking construction worker, you could take a break here between double shifts. Unfortunately, this is reserved for the King Ranch level and above, so this feature is pretty much reserved for the boss. There is no shortage of cup holders, whether you drink Starbucks or 7-Eleven coffee. Pickups are like toolboxes, and the Ford is no different. Plenty of places to squirrel things away. It would be easy to misplace things. I actually forgot my pliers behind door number two here. Dang, I liked those. Working late into the night, my camera doesn't capture it well, but the LED proximity lighting is okay, though you'll want to set up brighter lights for real work. Ford's newest user interface is Sync 4, a touchscreen-only system with halfway decent voice controls. This 12-inch screen, which is bigger than a regular iPad, isn't just on the Fancy Pants model. It's standard beginning on the XLT High Series. The response is excellent, so is the layout. There are enough hard buttons to control climate, heated and vented seats, heated wheel, and a pretty good Bang & Olufsen audio system. The screen is big enough so that the split view works well. We're both five foot nine. Three of me would be comfortable back here. One of you is enough. Trust me. Hardy har har. Uh, head, knee, leg, and foot room all very generous. Cushions are high enough so that thigh support is excellent, and the door openings are large enough so that car seats go in and out no sweat. People use these as family vehicles. Places for all sorts of stuff in the doors. Man, you can charge just about anything here, and more power ports up here, plus. Ooh, heated seats. Thank you, Ford, for not chintzing out on seat back pockets. Check out the floor. It's nice and flat so that when you're loading and unloading cargo, it's very easy. There's pretty much everything you need here. In fact, if you want to use this space to haul cargo, that's pretty easy. And there's an available lockable storage area that goes here. Your tools will be safe. Years ago, simply adding tie-downs to the pickup bed was advancing the art. 
How quaint. A lot of simple things add usability. All tailgates have slots that take on clamps. This here doubles as a bottle opener. How many times have you forgotten your tape measure? Problem solved. Call up home improvement videos on YouTube. Pencils won't roll away. I can't guarantee that at highway speeds. There's even a spot for a refreshing beverage. This isn't as useful as the GMC Multi-Pro tailgate. By that, if the flexibility is needed, it is pretty easy to get up and into the bed though. The spray and liner is a $600 option. There are plenty of removable tie downs plus lighting, but no built-in storage options like the bed wall ram box units. The very useful Pro Power on board lets you use the truck like a mobile generator. The system available with the Power Boost Hybrid will generate 7.2 kilowatts. That's enough to meet the electrical needs of an entire house framing crew. This one is two kilowatts, which will take care of light landscaping or a tailgate party, including a television, fridge, and portable heater. Call me if you're doing that. Considering that pickups are often bought or ordered to an owner's specifications or needs, it's kind of hard to do red light, green light because of the vast choices. But here goes. Green light. Ford up the quality of this pickup. Plastics are easily a grade higher. That's important when paying over 50 grand for a vehicle, and that's easy to do here. F-150 has some clever tech and touches. Yeah, the max reclined seats and folding transmission lever get oohs and ahs, but the simple stuff like a ruler and clamp receptacles on the tailgate are smart and affordable. I like that the powertrains include a V8 plus a powerful hybrid option. 24 MPG in the city from a full-size pickup? That's impressive. Yellow lights? Uh, no doubt F-150 driving dynamics are refined and comfortable. I'm thinking Ram is a bit more of both. Same goes for the interior appointments. Ford had the opportunity to leapfrog everyone in the cabin with this new version, but didn't. This is a new F-150 and the design is fine. It just doesn't look like it's 90% new. Red light. Are there any, really? Unless you're loyal to Chevy, GM, Nissan, Ram, or Toyota, you'll buy the version that's right for you. And the only problem might be you'll have to move up a trim level or two to get a needed feature. There will be an all electric version of the F-150 and it will be fascinating to see how pickup owners respond to it once price and specifications like range when towing comes out. There's also the fact that pickup owners tend to be loyal to brands they love. Kind of a dull moment, but it really needs to be said. Pickups are expensive these days and they've changed a lot in the last three or four years. So you're doing yourself a big disfavor if you're not out there and shopping all the brands. There's chatter a new Toyota Tundra will break cover soon, so watch for that. Ford's franchise is an evolutionary step, not a revolutionary one. It should be enough to keep it numero uno for the foreseeable future. All hail the king. An asterisk to the best-selling claim, fold both Chevy Silverado and GMC Sierra sales together, and GM sold more pickups, at least in 2020, as Ford retooled for the new F-150. Just saying, always trying to keep it accurate. Once again, thanks to Martin Campbell for driving so I can shoot running footage. We're in each other's bubble, so we can keep giving you pro-grade reviews, and it gives us something to do in our spare time. Sure would be nice to give hard-working men and women those max recline seats. They start at the $58,000 level with King Ranch, though. The sweet spot for an F-150 seems to be a four-wheel drive Lariat with a few options. Retail is $53,000. A reminder that I've started up a price quote service and it's free. Pickup trucks are an excellent reason why you should use one because there are all sorts of incentives and rebates. Different dealerships get different prices on pickup trucks because some are more successful. I have used a price quote service in the past. It works. You don't have to use mine, but get price quotes. And if you're not brand loyal, it's wise to test drive and research all of the competitors, especially considering the prices. $55,000 will buy enough land for a ranch in some parts of the country, and then you'd have something to use the truck for. Hope you got something out of my look at the 2021 Ford F-150. This is the end of the video where I normally give you a fun fact, but really, come on, we all know every bit of trivia there is about the Ford F-150, starting with the fact that it's been the best selling vehicle in America since dirt was invented. Uh, so this time, 
How about some bloopers? Uh, it's cold out, um, just above freezing, and I'm in the shade because I'm always looking for even light. And darned if I could not say aluminum. The body panels are still military grade aluminum alloy. Aluminum, 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 military grade aluminum al I can't say aluminum. I can't say aluminum. Aluminum grade alloy. Wow, I suck. I suck. Automatic engine stop start systems are getting really good these days. They keep improving. And this one here is not working. There it is. This old 15 inch MacBook Pro is actually larger than the new 16 inch model. It was a little hard to remove. Why can I not get it out? You know, sometimes I have to do things a couple times. You have to understand that when I started out in television, I was a photographer editor. I did not appear on camera. And whenever the stations that I worked for did automotive stories, I would write the pieces, but I would not appear in them because, well, it was my useless command of knowledge. A reporter would be on camera. But when I was doing reviews, I kind of had to show up on camera, even though I'm really not all that crazy about it. Speaking of which, it's time for me to go, okay? Remember to subscribe. This is a labor of love. That's Driven. I'm Tom Volk.